so here we are at last, The Awakening of Storm Rage. I know a lot of people have been waiting for a long time for this, and I do apologise for my lateness, but I think it will be worth it. Many people believe The Awakening of Storm Rage to be the hardest mission in this game, and I agree. Though you'll be happy to hear that I came up with an excellent strategy long ago, and I've finally decided to share it with you. I think this was probably the mission that made me want to create this guide in the first place. You know, that and the fact that there wasn't one already. But I digress. The first thing you want to do is build two wisps from your tree of life and set them to rally on these trees near this gold mine. Then take Tyranda and all your forces east to collect the Dryads. Dryads are excellent units and will be invaluable on this level. Send all of your attacking units north to deal with the Murlocs. This will give you a few experience and some gold. And for a bit of extra gold, I suggest selling some of the crappy items you might have, like your uh, Ring of Protection or the Mana Stone. As soon as you have the money, the first thing you want to do is build a second tree of life at that gold mine. Don't be stingy with getting wisps in either, because you'll want a lot of them. Now, if this wasn't a time mission, it would be nowhere near as difficult as it is. What you want to do now is take all your forces, round this corner, up this hill, and deal with the three raiders here, and just set up camp with all your forces around that fountain of health. As soon as your second tree of life has been built, and if you've got enough wisps on your trees, you should have enough wood and gold to start building a tree of ages or upgrading your first tree of life to a tree of ages. This is very important as you will need ballistas and you will need more dryads. And just build four more moon rails. It doesn't matter about placement, put them anywhere. At around the 78, 77 trees remaining mark, you should be attacked by about three grunts. With all your people around the Fountain of Health, don't worry about that. But try and draw them, try and draw the grunts away from the Fountain of Health. Just because it's a long ass battle and if they're too close to their base then there's a chance their hero and more units will join in. You don't want that, you want to keep all these people alive for now. As soon as you have your Tree of Ages, get in two Ancient of Laws outside the Orc base. And also protect them with four Ancient Protectors, making sure to leave enough room so you can get some catapults between them and the fire. And speaking of catapults, get some in now. Two is enough, and with whatever money you have left, build a few huntresses, make sure to set the rally point near the Ancient of Laws. And as soon as, it, <clears throat> and as, soon as your Ancient of Laws are completed, start building Dryads immediately. Probably about 10 is a good number, because at around the 55 mark, you shall be attacked by a much larger force. Your Ancient Protectors should be able to deal with most of these, and your forces near the Fountain of Health will stay being healed. This should draw out the hero. Ki focus on the hero, and then kill the rest of the army. And then it will be time to start uh, chipping away at the orc base. And as soon as you've dealt with the Blade Master and all the units that came with him, start using ballistas to destroy that first watchtower. This will draw out more base defenders, and you'll pick these off too. Now it's a case of waiting till it's almost night time, around the 37, 36 tree mark. While you're waiting, build more huntresses, build more dryads. Activate your scroll of protection and send them all through the base. Just run through the base, ignoring all the orcs, and tell them to rally just past the river. Also, send your ballistas in because that will help draw a lot of the fire. Now, what you want to do get all your dryads and tell them to rally at that fountain of mana, but tell your huntresses to engage the primal guardians. If you've done it right, the primal guardians will try and focus their attacks on the huntresses. As soon as all your dryads are out of the range of vision of the owlbears, shadow meld your huntresses. The owlbears are scripted to run to your base, whereas the primal guardians will stay there. It, as soon as the owlbears are out of the way, it will be a lot easier to take out the spirits. Now, you'd think that the owlbears would attack the orc base, but no, they run to your base. Start building more huntresses and dryads and just tell them to rally at your base instead of letting them go all the way to the Fountain of Health. Once the owlbears are out of the way, it's time to start attacking this Primal Guardian here. He has the Inner Fire ability, and which he'll use on himself, which is why the dryads are useful, because Abolish Magic will stop them doing that. Once he's dead, hide your dryads over here, shadow meld your huntresses, 
and tell Tyrande to go attract the other set of owlbears. As soon as your angel protectors get destroyed, stop building dryads and use the money to build more huntresses or, if you don't have enough time, archers. And you should have plenty of wisps, so get some more angel protectors in at your base entrance. Now use Tyrande to attract the third set of owlbears and shadow melding as soon as they appear. As you can see, the owlbears are attacking my base and you need to kill the owlbears because you have to kill every unit of the primal guardians before you can complete the mission, even if you kill the spirits. So if you don't have an army at your base waiting for them, you will be killed. And so far I've never been able to get enough units past the orc base in time to kill all the primal guardians there. It just would take too long, I think. And while the owlbears are attacking your base, it's time for you to take your small group of attackers and finish off the rest of the Primal Guardians. The blue one has the ability to Frost Nova, and the white one has the ability to Storm Bolt, I think. Uh, usually, even if you're close to one, he won't follow you, so you'll be fine attacking them one at a time without, without worrying about the other one coming along. Uh, if you need it, there's an anti-magic potion in one of those crates. Whatever you do, do not let Tyrande die, because you need her to grab the Horn of Tenaria. As you can see, this last one's about to die, and as soon as he's dead, the Owlbear should already be dead. That is the end of the mission. And as I said, this mission's hard. Very hard. Don't worry, I've had... Don't worry about it if you have to start over from the beginning, because it's a rushed mission, it's very short. Total playtime for me was only about 17 minutes, and even me, with my amazing skill at this game, I even had to restart once or twice. So, if you can do it less than that, then you're probably better than me. Not that that's very hard, but thanks for watching. Your prize for destroying the Murloc Hut is a pair of Boots of Speed, very useful for getting through the Orc base. Also, once you've destroyed the first Guardian, you'll find some crates around there. You can get a Jade Ring, which is an Agility Plus One item. Pick it up if you want. If not, don't, you know, you might find it useful.